All right, all right. Well, guys, I am super busy today. I had a lot of uh, design work going on and have my printers going, a couple of them. Um, but while I was going through this design, I was thinking, man, I, I got to give a quick tip on this. It's I, I take it for granted a lot, but uh, you might want to see this. When I was going through the, through some of the design on this this next project. Um, I was applying a lot of threads, and in this case, it was a one-inch thread. Uh, but if you, whether you're using a quarter-inch or you know 1032, you know whatever thread you're using, um, it's very common, uh, especially on functional parts. Right when you're trying to mate uh, something together, or uh, threads are very common. But sometimes, when you got the thread going, sometimes it they don't seem to fit. Sometimes they're just way too hard to turn. You know, have you ever had that happen? Um, I remember back in the day, uh, I used to fight that all the time. And on some of the smaller threads, I always had a tap and die set to come in and, and go over it um, to open it up a little bit, you know, and, and then assemble everything. But now it's like, no, no, no. You know, I want it to come out of the printer ready to go. Um, so, Let's take a look at the design I was doing and let me show you a couple of tips. Okay, well let's start uh, with Fusion 360 here. So you can see this is a very simple part. It's just an extension. Um, and you can see here at the very last I added the threads. And, well, let's see. I'll go ahead and delete that. Let's, let's start over here. I'll show you what I did. Uh, just make sure your diameters are correct. Uh, it's just one inch diameter and I'm going to go in and create the thread. Uh, everything's on auto. I want it modeled and I'm just going to go this full length from here back to the base. And there she blows. So there's my one inch and it's a one by one to eight UNC. Um, and you can pick whatever uh, uh, you want it uh coarse or fine you know you can go up to a 120 but I wanted it coarse down to 108 to, to an 8 and on the class here now I always use a 1A so when you're looking at the class of a thread a 1A a 2A a 3A a 2A if you you know get off the shelf hardware I think a lot of times it's 2A right 1A is a much looser fit and a 3A would be a tighter fit, right, between the threads on your mating threads. And let's see if you can see what's going on here. Yeah, see how the thread, it kind of uh, uh, increased your tolerance here between your mating thread. If you go to a 1, everything shrinks down a little bit. So it's meant for a loose fit. And that's what I want for now, right? Now let's go, uh, and I do the same thing on, on any threads, right? So let's go over to the slicer now. So here's the slicer, and I'm using um, Orca Slicer. So you can do the same thing between Orca Slicer and uh, Bamboo Studio or whatever you're going to use. Um, so this is all the stuff I'm printing off right now. So you can see everything set. And what I do here, because on Fusion 360 you have, you set the class, right? I always set it at 1A for a looser fit, but sometimes it's still too tight, right? So if you go down on quality here, under precision, and you see the XY hole compensation and XY contour compensation. So the hole compensation I have it set for 0.15 so it's like here where the hole with the thread is it's actually going to be 0.15 millimeters larger right and the contour over here this is going to be 0.15 millimeters smaller so I'm opening the gap between the, the threads and it's going to uh, be much easier to, to screw it on and off. Uh, now experiment with it. You know, sometimes sometimes just uh, 
like that. Point 0.1 is enough, sometimes not, but it, it all depends on your printer, right? Um, how tight is the tolerance on your printer? It differs from brand to brand, uh, sometimes even from printer to printer. Uh, could be the same brand, same type of printer, but it's slightly, slightly different. Uh, but this is what I usually do, and and most uh, most slicers will have some kind of setup, right, where you can adjust for this. Under here, it's it's under precision X Y hole compensation. Cura, I'm sure they have a uh, a setting on it. Um, just take a look for it. It's it's usually not hard to find. But I'm not going to go through all the slicers to show you. I just want you to see what happens when you do make an adjustment. Well, that's it. So hopefully your threads are going to be uh, working a little better. Uh, just experiment with it and get the settings down. And like I said, most, most slicers have some kind of compensation just for that purpose, right? Or any clearance hole that you need. Um, but I use it on threads all the time. And it... it definitely helps. So that's it for this video. Real short and sweet, but as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.